Okay, for part B, we have the same instructions that we had before for part A. We just have some different uh, information that's been provided this time. Still, the first thing you want to do is we're going to take care of this part. We're going to find that uh, the open interval, and then we're also going to find the delta. So first, open interval, we're going to plug everything into that particular formula. So we're going to do square root x minus 7 minus 4 less than epsilon is given as 1. So we just plug everything all in uh, to the formula. We need to solve this one for x. So we got to remove the absolute values, turn it into an inequality. This is going to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, and then we're going to add 4 uh, to all the sides because you want to isolate the, uh, the square root part because we need to isolate it so that way we can square both sides. So I'm going to add 4 to all the sides. If I add 4 to all the sides, then I'll get this. So now it will be between 3 and 5. You're going to square everything. So square it all the way through. You'll get 9 less than x minus 7 less than 25. We're squaring that to get rid of the radical. Now that the radical is gone, we can add 7 uh, to all the sides. So if we add 7, then we're going to get 16. Add 7 there, you're going to get 32, which means that the open interval should be 16 to 32. Okay, now for the second part, we're setting up this inequality here, x minus x of o, we're looking for the delta. So we're still going to do it the same way we did the previous example. We're going to set up x, and it's going to be minus x of o, so minus 23, and that's going to be less than uh, delta. We're going to solve this, so we're going to turn it into an inequality, and it's going to look like this. So again, it's between negative delta and positive delta. You need to add 23 to all the sides. So negative delta plus 23 less than x, and then delta plus 23 over here. We're doing that again because you want to isolate and solve for x. Now that we have each of these, what you're going to do is you're going to set each of these equal to what we got previously when we found that open interval. We found that 16 to 32. So the smaller one goes with 16, the larger one is going to be set equal to 32. Now when you do this, you're going to get two different values for your delta. So this is different than the previous example that was linear. Linear ones, what you'll end up getting delta to be the same, but if it's not linear, then you usually get two different values for it. And we want to pick the one that's the smallest one, because again, we want to minimize the error in the x direction, so we're looking for the smaller one. So I'm going to do negative delta plus 23 equals 16, do negative delta plus 23 equals 32. So now I have both of these and this is positive. And so now when I set both of them equal, I'm going to solve and get two different values for delta. This one I'm going to do 23 minus 16 is negative 7. And then with a negative there, I'll get delta to be positive 7. You should always get a positive number for your delta um, because that's what it says basically here. So if you don't get a positive number, you've got to go back and check because you might have did something wrong there. So uh, that was the first one we set equal to 16. Here's the second one set equal to 32. So trap both 23 from both sides. We get delta is equal to 9. We want to pick the smaller one again. We're minimizing the, the error in that direction, the x direction. So 7 is going to be your answer.